So the country literally has no money and we are now promising a hundred billion dollars. The funny thing is the, 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 the leg that we stood on as conservatives was saying that it was only like seven or eight billion dollars of the old bill, the Senate bill that, that Lankford and all them stood on, Schumer stood on. Only seven or eight billion to 10 billion went to America's sovereignty, America's border. And we were like, no, that's not gonna happen. Mike Johnson even said, no, it's not gonna happen. If there's not more for the border bill, then we're not actually gonna support this Ukraine and Israel and Guyana and Taiwan funding. Boy, has time changed. Let's jump into what just happened. And there's a $100 billion bill passing. And where we were thinking, we were hoping to get it seven to 10 billion. And we were complaining that it wasn't enough. Now we're getting goose egg. Let's jump into it. Today's video starts right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. Thank you so very much for being here. You hear that the roosters are going crazy. It's a beautiful day here on the farm. And we just thank you for being a part of our lives. Thank you for watching each and every day. We hope that you'll give us a thumbs up if you like the content of the video. Now, today we're gonna to be talking about Speaker Johnson. Here's what I, I want to, um, not only say Speaker Johnson, let me go back. The conservative Republican Party as a whole. I, I can see within a five to 10 year period, the true conservatism, the true conservative, Christian conservative, fiscal conservative, the true movement of godly conservatism and conservatism that has backbone. We will be in the 10% minority, if not less. The Republicans that we see now is really just the Democrats of the 90s. We used to call them blue dog Democrats. They were very Southern. Like for instance, a lot of our Democrats that come out of the South were basically now the Republicans um, the, what we call the rhinos or the establishment Republicans. They're standing up for things that really only benefit them. It only benefits the majority of the lobbyists and really does not do anything for the common man. The Democrats who quote unquote used to stand for the people, used to stand for the, the, the little guy is even further away from that now too. So you're seeing a movement of extreme left you're seeing the uniparty, what I consider the 40% the of, of the Democrats and 40% of the Republicans who make up the middle and they play between the 40s, meaning they'll fight for little wins to make politicians look better to make you feel like you're winning if you're on the conservative or, or the liberal side, but ultimately they're playing for their self. And then we have the conservatives, which are probably a minority of 10% or less. So now let's go back to the story. We have McCarthy kicked out basically as speaker. The conservatives backed the fact of his ouster. They used the Democrats to help them get him out. What we don't realize, McCarthy and Johnson are just about the same. Actually, McCarthy wrote, was able to raise a little bit more money because he had a full establishment behind him. Johnson came in as the firebrand. However, his movement of appeasing the conservative part, trying to stand up for the Americans actually has harmed him. So now he's maneuvered right into the centrist establishment movement. It's, it's either they're getting blackmailed or there's just so much money that they cannot forcibly say no. If you go back and look at clips when they were trying to pass the Senate bill, and even before, his first orders of business, he kept saying yes, he was gonna fund Israel and help Israel. Yes, he was gonna help Ukraine, but before he did any of that, it was all gonna be about our border security. Border security, border security, border security. That's all we heard. Of course, they had the opportunity to do it during the Trump administration. I digress though, because remember, we talked about that. He was wanting seven to 14 billion, could have done it. Look at the wall between Egypt uh, and, and the Gaza Strip. That we could build that wall for literally $10 billion and it's phenomenal. But let's go back. So now he's saying, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna build the wall. We're gonna get funding. We're gonna stop funding for everything else until then. That's what he said. And you know, we made videos of saying, hey, kudos, good job. Now, you know, it's yet to be determined if you're actually gonna hold up to it. And bam, and man, he didn't. So now when they passed the Senate bill, the Lankford bill where it kind of went up and, and smoked because really conservatives stood up and said, this is a joke, we cannot vote for this. The House wouldn't take it on. The Republicans, the true conservative Republicans, which is not many, stood against it in the Senate. 
And then now we have a new bill that's even worse than that bill that just passed the House, that will pass the Senate, and that will Biden will and Bill Biden will assign. Now here's a few problems, and, and, and here's where I want us to really dive a little deep. And I want you to stay with me now. Let's let's talk through it. And I'll be honest with you. If this were loans, if we were loaning money to these people that we know could pay back, promissory notes, just like any part of the business. Now, I don't like credit, I don't like debts, but if we're going to give money away, especially taxpayer-funded money that I've worked hard for, that you've worked hard for, it should be in a loan capacity, and they should pay top dollar interest because they're doing it to really fight for their lives, quote-unquote fight for their lives. They deserve to take the money and use it however they should be able to pay it back. Now, that's kind of what Trump was pushing for a few weeks ago. However, remember, Trump is a huge supporter of McCarthy and Johnson. So remember, even though our firebrand, our leader, our conservative person that's over the party, remember, he still has ties to the middle too. He has to impact them and influence them to vote for him. That shows the party power in Washington. It shows that politicians know what they're doing. That's why they're there. That's why they don't have term limits. That's why they're mega rich. And that's why we will never be able to see a sovereign, strong, freedom-oriented, conservative country again because we have leaders who cannot stand up. They have no backbone. Johnson said he was going to you know, build the border wall, cut funding for everything else, and make sure there's no money going to Ukraine or Israel before the border. None of that's happened, and now he's passed a bill, $100 billion, that will funnel more money to, it, to Ukraine, not as much to Israel, and not as much to Taiwan, but again, all over the border. All over the border. Not, the border's not even in this bill. At least the Senate, which was a crappy bill, had the border in there of some form. So now we have a, a less conservative bill, a more spending bill. Do you realize if we keep spending like this, I, I'm, I'm being serious, because they're not loans, they're just giving money away. If we keep doing this, our interest is going to cost us more than Social Security and Medicare cost us. Do you realize that? So more than the government pensions, the government subsidies, more than the government uh, money that they give out each and every month, it's going. the interest is going to cost us more. Well, inflation numbers just came out and all of a sudden realized that we can't lower the interest. We haven't fixed inflation. So this administration, even though it's not Bi just Biden, it goes back to all the other administrations for the last, since Nixon, really, that has screwed up our dollar. We keep giving foreign money. The reason we give it, that, what we don't realize is the reason we do it, even though it doesn't make sense to us, it doesn't make sense to the, the leaders either that's doing it. But they're getting so much money, so much kickbacks, covering their blackmail or whatever it may be, coming back to them. Do you honestly think they're that incompetent? No, they're absolutely brilliant because they're playing a game that is absolutely corrupt. It's a Ponzi scheme, and we're just the ones that the, are the pawns in it, the ones that's funding it, the ones that's actually not got enough people to stand up because if they can keep us polarized, if they can keep the left and right fighting like crazy, then the politicians, quote unquote, look better because they, they win this one, they win this one, they lose this one, but they win this one. If they can keep you so polarized to where you can't stand together, when, when liberals and conservatives, if you look at the extreme liberal, not leftist now, the extreme liberal who wants more libertarian views, more freedoms, and then of course the conservatives who just say, leave me alone, I'm conservative, I'm a Christian, I don't wanna have anything to do with all this. To be honest with you, it's like a circle. They're actually pretty close. The problem is we've allowed the establishment and the extreme leftist socialists to take polarization angles to where then it makes infighting in our nation to where nothing we can agree on is gonna work. So therefore, the politicians always win. They win by spending our money, they win by putting us in piles of debt. The only way out is a complete and utter destroying of our dollar or destroying of our economy or a massive war. None of those are good outcomes. But that is the place that they've put us in and Speaker Johnson, you've done that more than anybody because you've not stood up against it. And even though you say you do, your backbone, left you and money came and therefore now he's talking about how much we need to help ukraine we need to help ukraine so what happened is we didn't get a better leader than Mac than mccarthy we got the same thing and actually probably a little worse because then he got the support from the conservatives he got support from the the basically the freedom caucus and now they look like schmucks because people like gates and 
Biggs, and Green. Yeah, now they're standing against him. Massey, even though he's come out against him, the bottom line is they do not have the power to do anything. We've lost the fact of even, we don't even have hardly a majority. So then you hear, here's the Republicans. This is, this is my biggest pet peeve. They'll say, well, look, it's one step closer. It's not what we wanted, but we negotiated and it's better than what we had. No, it's not, because actually there's no funding in this bill. There's not even a funding bill for the border before we do all this. So the Democrats actually won this. And I say Democrats, it's actually the middle won this. The, 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 the uniparty won this. The conservatives actually lost and the liberals actually lost. The people who want to live off the government lost too. It's ultimately a lose-lose for the true American people. It's a win for all these guys because all they're doing is completely and utterly defacing the Constitution and defacing your freedom and spending all the money that you give them and that you're taxed on and that they print in the name of your children, your grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. So when, when these politicians come to you and try to get votes, please don't believe any of them. Don't. I mean, don't believe any of them because every one of them has to sell out just a little bit. The question is, we make the conservatives look good because we say, well, they've not sold out too much. The sad thing is, and the sad reality is, most of them, if they stay in Washington long enough, they end up getting corrupt. The ones that are not are the ones that can't stay. They somehow get kicked out pretty quickly because they're not willing to play the game. And Mike Johnson, he's playing the game. McConnell, he's playing the game. I don't like them, but man, they are good at the game because they've stayed power, they've held power, and they're uber rich. So in their eyes, they're successful. In their eyes, they're doing what they want to do. And they're lying to our face each and every day, saying that they're going to work for the people, and all they're actually doing is actually screwing you and me. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Problem I have too, Trump is a loyal supporter of Mike Johnson and also McCarthy. Huge supporter of them. At the same time, the conservatives back him. I'm a true conservative, and truly, I'm going to vote for him, especially if it comes down to him and Biden. But we have to make sure that the leader that we put in is actually willing to stand up. I'm scared. I think that Trump wanted to do that, and I think Trump is willing to do that. However, I don't think, I honestly believe it's too big of a burden for one man to do, and I don't believe he can stand against the D.C. swamp. I really don't. I don't know if anybody can. You know why Argentina and El Salvador and some of those places have better leaders now in a completely different turn of their nations and all of a sudden their nations are growing and doing better now? It took them getting to the very bottom. It took them realizing that their money was worth nothing and they had so much crime that people couldn't go out of their homes. They couldn't even buy a loaf of bread. So when we think it's bad, it's got to get a whole lot worse before people start realizing these politicians are just wolves in sheep's clothing. They're not doing anything for us. They're just doing what's best for them. So do I like people like Massey, people like Rand Paul? Absolutely. But there's few and far in between. There's not enough of them. There's not enough of them. Most of these guys are selling out to surveil you, spend your money, and fatten their pockets. And, and for the few that's not, I, I challenge them to keep fighting. But sadly, they can only do so much. I'm hoping that things change. But sadly, until we get to the very bottom, I don't know if we realize there's a way up. We have to look. Now, the reason I make these videos, though, is because I want you to realize that, yes, we, we can only do so much. But that's why it comes back down to us to independently think, independently provide for ourselves and try to be as sustainable as possible. Because when we realize that there is no savior when it comes to these people, to men, to politicians, then we realize we have to rely on ourselves. Then we have to say, okay, I can't rely on myself because we're worthless. We still are finite and we can't do it all ourselves. Then that's when we have to put our faith and hope back in something spiritual, something bigger than us. And of course, that's our God. So we have to say, okay, men's going to fail us. We're going to fail us. We have to look spiritually to, to have healing and know that we can do the best that we can. So therefore, we seek Christ. When we seek Christ and we seek God, then we have a better base. Then we realize as bad as it is, it can never get so bad that we can't rely back on God. And what I think we're seeing is America either has to rely back on God or it will face its demise. I hate to say it, but you tell me what other way is looking good. Do you honestly believe, even if Trump wins with this Congress, anything's going to get done? 
we've seen with the Supreme Court, they've done some good things, but ultimately they've still not really been a true conservative bench. Also, the fact that they've kind of you've seen conservatives pull away from the the, the Christian beliefs of, of well, you know, ah, well, I don't know if I'm that staunch on abortion. I don't know if I'm that staunch on marriage. I don't, you know, I don't know. So they almost say we're willing to lose those battles to fight for the money of the people or fight for other freedoms. All it seems like Republicans are just it seems like Republicans are just good at losing, and true conservatives are the ones that lose it all because leadership is not representing people like us. So now it comes down to serving God and then realizing you have to take care of the, the things you can take care of. And that's your family, teaching them good morals and values, understanding that we need hope. And hope cannot come from these politicians. We can be hopeful in them, but ultimately they're going to let you down. Let me know your thoughts. Am I wrong? Am I right? I, I sadly don't think that we're going to see any way up until we get to the very, very bottom. And I don't even think we're there yet. And sadly... We keep spinning like this, we keep letting people in our borders, and we keep not having values and morals here in America. We're going to keep on going down. So I challenge you to prepare, be ready, and take care of your family as much as you can. Try to shade them from all this craziness because that will help them grow up to be better than what we've seen and what we're producing in America. Let me know your thoughts. God bless. Happy Homestead, y'all. Just leave it all behind. River's gonna cry when you're gone